You are now checking out The Win Podcast Where the everyday people Are the celebrities So, so let's, let's get, get to, to know, know them. them What's up everybody? Welcome to The Win Podcast This is a special episode We want to do a recap On the 50 episodes And all the episodes that we have done So far So we decided to come together And talk about it And do a mm-hmm. recap I'm here with the co-creator and also the producer of the Win Podcast, Alex- hi. <laughs> Alexandra Cloud. Hi, hi everyone. <laughs> hi, Wind. <laughs> well, for the two straight months uh, together. Uh, <laughs> 304, hi, um, So I'm going to jump right into it. Um, so Cloud, how do you feel um, about the podcast reaching its 50th episode? What does that mean to you? Uh, when you just look back on pretty much all the guests, all the people that was on the show. Wow, it's amazing. I think it's a, um, a wonderful, uh, I forgot the word, but I think it's just great that we were able to do all these podcasts, meet all these people, share all these great stories, and it's, ama- and it's, it's an amazing journey of growth um, between us working together and um, just all the hard work that we put into this. For me, um, I think about like, um, I just think about like the work that we had to put in, uh, the 50 uh, journeys that people shared were from all different types, uh, which, you know, we had DJs, we have actors, we had, uh, you know, just a regular person being a father, uh, just these everyday stories that to me uh, spoke volumes and that we all can relate. And um, I thought it was just great to provide that platform, not for like, other people, but just like for us, and that and I learned a lot from those episodes, doing the episodes, working with you, and also uh, just interviewing them. Mm-hmm. And um, I thought that was pretty dope. And to reach, you know, having no expectations, as in like uh, just reaching the 50th episode, yeah. you know, it's been pretty amazing, pretty dope. And, and speaking on expectations, did you have any expectations when you decided to work on this project, be a part of it? You know, and if you did, what were some of those expectations? In the beginning, it was just like going with the flow and like enjoying the process, enjoying um, doing a podcast. I um, I never done a podcast. Um, I worked in production before, of course, and acting. But as far as a podcast, I never worked on it. And I felt that um, I thought it was great. I thought it was a, a new journey for us to work together that way. And um, I... In the beginning, we were like, okay, we're just doing this and we'll see what happens. And then all of a sudden we're like season two and season three and now we're almost in season four. And it's like, wow, look at all this growth. Um, We keep doing it and um, it's like a a drug. Like, wow, all all these people that we're meeting and every time we finish shooting, it's like, oh my God, this was great. All these people that we're meeting. So to me, I think it's just the expectations, I guess, changed as we kept going. Yeah, I agree. Cause for me, uh, I didn't have any expectations. Like I, I usually share this story with the guests before they go on, just to give them like, well, what is the Win Podcast? How did it, you know, come mm-hmm. to be? And make a long story short, you know, it came out of frustration that I had when I would reach out to a lot of other podcasts uh, to be a part of theirs as a guest, and I would, you know, hear. Uh, first of all, I hear a lot of silent no's. Like a lot of them didn't get back to me. Um, and a couple did, and I, I just got frustrated because I'm like, it's a simple yes or no. Like, you're not gonna break my heart. You're not gonna like, <laughs> you know, get me mad. Just get the, the decency of like writing back to the email. Welcome saying, to acting. <laughs> well, That's what, what they do. Yes, I'm. You I'm never used, hear I, I understand that, but that is a dumb ass. <laughs> I agree. Um, a, yeah. That is a dumb ass totally uh, way of like communicating with people. Like, just say yes or no. Like, mm-hmm. so. It, it spawned from all of that, and then um, I, I said, fuck it, I'm going to create my own platform. I'm not going to rely on anybody, and I'm going to create uh, this thing where, you know, we're always glorifying, like, celebrities, but, you know, we never glorify ourselves, or we yeah. forget that. Yeah, we used you, to talk about that, like, even meeting people when we would travel. We'd right. Like, oh, my God, look at this person. And we would just connect with them. Right. And all of a sudden, it's like, wow. And that's look at that person's story. This is great, and that's how we. And that's what I uh, thought of the idea where you know the Win Podcast with the everyday people are celebrities. And then when I told you that, you jumped on. It's like I love to produce it, um, and this was was our like 
pretty much our first project together working on it. So it came from, you know, from this frustration, but then it became something else. And I remember telling you, like, I don't care if people like it. I don't care if people hear it. I don't care if it doesn't travel. I just want to do this for me. And I want to shine a light on these stories that I like heard and also was inspired by. I want to get more, get to know them more. So it started from that and it began to grow and people started commenting, people started mm -hmm. listening, people started sharing. And the guests uh, always left oh, uh, yes. feeling uh, almost like they had a therapy session with me. <laughs> so, but, um, but you could see it in their eyes when they mm -hmm. came in and when they left, like their eyes were glo like gla glossy, yeah. but it's not because they smoked weed. It was yeah. just because you could see the light. The yeah. I saw like a light just come out of them like, wow, like, oh my God, I'm leaving here with so many things to think about. Right. Or like, wow, I did this. Wow. And I never gave myself credit. Right. No, and that was that was a and that was a an experience for me. Um, and they will always say, "Man, you're great the way you ask these questions." And mm -hmm. I always throw it back to them. I was like, "But well, I'm just a mirror. I'm a reflection of you, you know." And I, I find your your life story very interesting. And to me, for them to leave feeling, uh, I felt like even like you said, you know, even with more confidence, more reassurance, more being proud of like. Yeah, I am somebody. I, I this story does count, and I am, I, I, and yeah, there's so billions of people on this earth, but I am important. I am special, mm -hmm. and my story does matter. And to me, that meant a lot to me to yeah. to know that they felt that. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it just started to grow, and I'm like, you know what? I just don't want to. The end of the expectation came. Well, I just don't want to stop at just one season. Yeah. What if we do a second season, and then? What if we do a third season? <laughs> and then, you know, how can we now just incorporate this in our lives, you know, but this new once or twice uh, a year or whatever, whatever it is, but still doing it, not for anybody else, but for us. And at the same time, the people that we meet, we're making connections and uh, they're learning a lot. So I also want to say, like, I want to commend you as a host, because I think um, I've heard a lot of things and seen people interview, but I feel like you as a host, you... You really connect to the person. You you are great. Um, listen, well, hear. You really hear the person, and you can when they're speaking, you can um, paraphrase or decipher everything they said in in one sentence. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an um, amazing gift that you have because not a lot of people have that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just want to commend you about that. Thank you. And I wanted to ask you, how do you feel? Um, being a host and what like how do you feel how much growth do you think you have gone through from the beginning to now what, uh, what have you learned about yourself um i, I learned um one i i loved being uh, a host of course with with everything in the beginning you know you got your nerves you like how's it gonna work you got so many questions <laughs> of like how like how can like you know what if they are because i like to get deep and whatever if i'm talking to anybody in the street like i like to get deep and ask them mm -hmm. something that about their life um but i was you know there's a lot of questions of like yeah. what if they are uncomfortable what if they don't like this question so i i, I was pretty much learning as i as i went on mm -hmm. and still try yeah and still try to get the answer that i was seeking from them they're like sometimes they will sugarcoat yeah. it, you know but then i'll i'll bring it back somehow i'm like well, what about this and then i'll learn to eventually let it go because maybe they're not ready to share that and and stop reaching for an answer that I want because they may not be in that place. So if they don't want to face that answer, how can I bring it back now to them to make them see something that they probably will realize like, okay, cool. I'm, I'm not going to admit to that, but he did point something out. I'm, I think he's right about something. So I remember it was a whole bunch of mixtures of those type of things. And, and for me, like a lot of the guests didn't know too, that like, you know, I was going through stuff in my life too. So this was actually like helping me, with those certain moments, just like hearing stories of like from the writer perspective, from the you know from an actor's perspective, just reminders of like you know we're all we all are connected, yeah. we all relate, you know we all have our we'll fears, the same we all have, you all go through the same struggles, we all have our doubts. So it was constant reminders of lessons that I learned, mm -hmm. you know, from my spiritual teacher, from myself, mm -hmm. from people around the world that I meet. So it was always like these reminders but fresh 
from a different person. It's just not coming from one person. Yeah. You know, these reminders are coming from different everyday people. Well, and you start messages. you start seeing the connections of, of, with all of us. So those are a lot of things that, that I learned uh, about myself, uh, just like certain areas of insecurities, uh, some doubts, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes uh, it's tough facing the truth for certain things. Um, and I think ultimately it's just, you know, the biggest reminder for me was to also sit down, relax, and look how far you came. Because a lot of these people, a lot of these guests that we um, we interviewed, uh, they haven't took, they haven't taken the time so long to do what we was doing in the sense of just talking and reflecting back. Yeah. And I think that is so crucial um, in everyone's lives. You don't even have to be an artist. You just, you're a human being. You have a heart. You can do this. So I think it's so important uh, and a reminder, a big reminder, yeah. to sit down, reflect, and look at how how, come. Yeah, how far you came and how uh, how powerful you are, how awesome you are, how amazing you are, and really, you know, give yourself a hug and a pat on the back, and like you know, you're you're doing it. So yeah. So <laughs> to me, I, I, as a host, it's just so much <laughs> that I'm learning and continue to learn from these, mm-hmm. from these, from by myself and from these from these guests. Um. What was um, what was a, a favorite episode of yours? Oh wow, oh, that's a great question. Maybe or even a, you know, so it doesn't many. it doesn't have to say this is at all. And this is the best one. The ones that yeah. you should know. But I'm saying like, what was something that you like? There was ones that like you know that you connected to like for whatever reason, like super hard. Mm. The first episode um, with um, Ray Tarvin, mm. I thought it was great because of his story. Mm. I didn't know his story of the Grand... I only knew the Grand Central where he would just say hi to everybody and that's it. Yeah. But I didn't know his story. I thought he was like a homeless guy. Like I didn't yeah. know. So to me, it was just like all the thoughts that I had in my head, mm. he was able to give them... Get, I was able to see his true self with mm. the, the his interview with you, and I thought that that was it was very humble. Mm. He's a very humble individual that a lot of people can learn from. He's not somebody that everybody knows. Mm. Um, not even in Grand, Grand Central, people would just by, pass by him and think he's crazy. Mm. And to me, he's the mo- one of the most humble stories that we have of everybody mm. there because he, he's like a nobody to mm. some people. But he is not a nobody. He's right. a somebody. No, I agree. Um, uh, and that, there's a lot of others more. Um, but he stood out to me. I guess because he couple, was a Yeah, a couple stood out for me. Um, once again, mm-hmm. this is not oh nitpicking of what's the best one. Mm-hmm. They're always great guests. But, you know, just like, in, just like in life, you know, there's certain movies that you love that still stick yeah. with you. Stuff like that. Um, for me, um, I thought about uh, Matt, Matt Boogie. Uh, oh, okay, the yeah. whole thing of being a, 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 of him being a father and what he had to do to leave mm-hmm. uh, his old lifestyle way and how he just took on this new lifestyle and this was everything he wanted. I thought that was dope and um, and the jokes that we had uh, yeah. just having fun. DJ Mocha was another one. That I felt like I was talking to like a brother of mine about music and and, to, and he was a DJ. He still is a DJ and um, it was just dope talking about music. Another one that I feel like I w- that sticks out to me because I remember I, one I didn't know she was going to do this and two um, I was nervous to do it. I think it's one of the first interviews that I was kind of like nervous because here I am jumping. Uh, I feel like I was jumping into new waters of like I don't want to make anyone uncomfortable. And that was uh, Alexia Garcia from the oh, show. Oh yeah, Pose. she was my second one. Um, yeah. And I love that episode. I think she's awesome, uh, awesome human being. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that one, because, you know, she's a transgendered uh, actress. And to me, that was something, a new world that I was going to dive, dive yeah, into yeah. to to learn from and to ask questions, but not ask ignorant questions. Exactly. It's coming from a place of, you you don't know, know. that I don't know. And, yeah. and, it's, and, and to also, at the same time, as I'm learning, to have other people's learn as well from this and hopefully the ignorant people will come to their senses of like we're just human beings and you have a right to live any life that you want to live and she also taught a lot in her episode because there was a lot of things that she could have come off as angry Mm -hmm. towards people who felt a certain way towards her but she put herself in their shoes and was like well 
they probably thinking of me this way because of this and this and this. Right. And I was just like, I remember you had mentioned that to me before I heard it. I was just like, wow, that is amazing. Mm -hmm. Because she's not saying, oh, they're just, you know, they're fucked up for thinking about me like that. Right. She wasn't saying that. Yeah. <clears throat> that was, uh, that, she could tell she's very kind and humble. That, that was a very, uh, that was very shocking for me. And I remember in the episode, I just say that to her. I was like, you know, you have every right to like, I guess, have this anger towards those people. And I think at one point you did, but mm -hmm. you're at a point where it's like, well, they don't know better. They're, it, they're, they're not idiots, you say idiots, but they're like, they, they don't know better. Like, they, and, they and, know. and sometimes they don't want to learn and that's their, that's their shit. That's not mm -hmm. my shit. And I thought that was just so like amazing Which to reminds hear. me of Guru Wars. Right. She says that all the time. And, uh, and I was like, wow, like that's, that, that's pretty dope. Like I, I, I would, I would, I wouldn't have think, cause here I, cause she was also defending both sides. She's like, I understand what you're saying. And yeah, it's right. Mm -hmm. You know, but then the other side too, is like, they also have that feeling too. What, and some, sometimes people don't want to let go of that or want to learn or exactly. accept change. Yeah. Um, another episode to me, cause it was again on a, on a, a dope, uh, episode how it happened was Billy Oxton. I uh, was a trumpet oh. player. <laughs> yeah. um, um, the trumpet that player. was a bonus. That was a bonus episode. <laughs> That's but right, like he's we have more than 50. Right. <laughs> he was a trumpet player that I was following for so long. He's played with Charles Bradley, Sharon Jones, but long story short, you know, I seen this guy play all like in, you know, the Apollo Theater and all that stuff. But it was just so dope that he said uh yes to this interview. Yeah. And we connected, we spoke, and then even afterwards he's taught me some trumpet lessons. So that was another one. That was like a personal one for me. It's like, oh man, this is so dope. Uh, that I'm interviewing like a musician that I was like, you know, looking up to and like appreciate his, his craft. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to say, um, what are some, oh, you had a question? No, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, what are some great tools of, uh, about now, like us working together that you think that were, are effective because, um, you know, there's other people that, uh, that have podcasts that work with other people and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And now um, I want to touch on now, like, you know, you have these guests, you're doing these episodes, but now every now and not every now and then, but you also need uh, these tools to keep the boat moving and everything running, oh, uh, going straight. Tools are never give up. Even if, even if there are guests that you reach out to that don't respond to you, mm -hmm. just keep it moving. You know, try, you know, you, you, you try to reach out to them once or twice. And I mean, like you say strike three, that's it. Mm -hmm. Um, and if they don't reach out, then just keep moving. Um, another thing is, um, uh, communication. If mm -hmm. you have a partner, some people are have solo podcasts, but like if you are with someone, communication is very important mm -hmm. and, um, letting go of your pride and ego and just mm -hmm. be able to accept whatever, um, is given from each other mm -hmm. and being honest uh, what else is important researching you know there's tons of ways with with audio and, and promoting and um, even things that we're learning doing a media kit like there's research about podcasts research different ways of how you can promote and and do uh, uh, promote create content mm -hmm. um, what else uh, I'm gonna touch up on that mm -hmm. uh, one communication is very key. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's I, that's also you know you know whenever whoever whatever because it all depends roles, on the type of podcast right, too. There's whatever so many roles, types of podcasts. Whatever roles you're filling within that podcast, make yeah. sure you know you attend to it. Uh, you're on time for things. You uh, of you know just you know take it seriously because yeah. podcasting is a job at the end of the day, um, and it takes a lot of work to be consistent and put, produce content. Not every episode is going to be great, you know that, mm -hmm. but it's fine. But as long as you keep on pumping it out, learning from it, and having the consistency of it, making sure everything flows. Persistence, you know, consistency right. are like a major. Because there's a lot of work that goes behind uh, oh, yeah. the podcasting that a lot of people don't see. They just see the episodes and that's it. But like you said, there's the a lot editing. of the editing. There's a lot of following up with the people. And I think <clears throat> one of the things that you mentioned that I remember I told you, I was like, hey, listen, I'm not going to have nobody... Uh, I'm not going to have my destiny in anybody's hands. That's something that I learned years ago from uh, one of my bosses that was annoying. But <laughs> he, he... Hey, he taught you a lesson. Yes. Even though being, annoying people teach you Right? Even him being annoying <laughs> and sometimes joking. negative, this guy taught me so much 
that I use in uh, my craft and stuff like that. So one of the things he said was like, don't have your destiny in somebody else's hands. Go after you need to, you need to answer, follow up, keep on following up. Yeah. And for me, I said that to you and I was like, if we'll reach out to these people, if they don't respond, you do a follow up, but yeah. if they don't give you an answer and by the third day, we're scratching them off and we're moving on. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, we have a season that we want to uh, uh, go after and to accomplish and we can't let anything get in our way and we have to go straight forward. If and always know, plan for more. Like right. let's say you want to interview 15 guests, always have more than that. Right. on your plate because people will cancel at the last minute right. <laughs> right. that's another thing and you have to be able to call somebody mm -hmm. and be like oh are you available we have the slot open mm -hmm. we rented the studio can right. you you know come yeah. through being very organized yeah you know, and, and be, also be able to deal with things that happen last minute right being flexible, flexible with that yeah um I, I think also too uh at, you know if you're working with someone or a couple people knowing and we spoke about this yesterday is knowing people's strengths and weaknesses, mm -hmm. um, and delegating certain things that they're that they're great with, and that they will accomplish that. So, for instance, I remember I, I told you it's like you know you, you're the producer, you're handling all the dates. Here's the guests, uh, book them, and you let me know when I'm working. Here, here's the here's the Tuesdays and Thursdays. We know Tuesdays and Thursdays we're recording. So yep. you let me know the yeah, schedule. So, so you know, there's, there's no reason for us to talk about it every other day. Hey, what about this person? You think about this? You have the list. You let me know. You coordinate it. And, you know, I think by the second season, we caught wind of that and caught uh, and got strong with that where now you gave me this list. I said, okay, cool. So yeah, I know for the have. month of whatever, March, you know, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I have these two people, these two people, I'm meeting them. Okay, great. So then that gives me all I have. Now I have to do the research and homework that gives me time to now come up with the questions that I want to ask these people mm -hmm. and also have the improv moments of like, as I'm, while I'm hearing them, you know, ask new questions. Exactly. I'm open to like being in the moment. Yeah. So communication, being organized, also have room and to deal with surprises. Yeah. Dealing with surprises. Because people cancel it. And you. don't allow anyone else outside of your circle to bring your product down or exactly. sacrifice it. If something happens that they can't make it or they don't, you know, give you a, a good leeway ahead of time of, you know, they're not answering, move on, scratch it and keep on moving forward. Definitely. Um, is there any other questions you have in your, your oh, side? Um, I have probably like two more. Uh, well, I was going to ask you, um, what challenges have you faced and how you overcame those dealing uh, with the podcast uh, or within yourself? It could be too. Challenges, one big challenge. And, and I feel like it's a, it's an ongoing thing sometimes with us is learning how you say certain things like how you uh like for instance um like you be you be specific yeah about things and that's a thing that, that, that i have in general that's that was some that was that that was a challenge for me because i wouldn't understand what you're trying to say your brain and my brain think you have, there's yeah. two different brains so yeah. um where i thought i understood you was thinking something else mm -hmm. or if you said something one way i was just like does she mean this? Does she mean that? I'm like, where is she getting this from? Sometimes it could be just random. Like, and I think that was something that um, I, I, I thought about. Like, well, how can we fix this? One is to like ask you, what do you mean, <laughs> and make sure you Which clarify. Is that um, that's the basic. Yeah. Instead of like me assuming something, mm -hmm. and then two, because sometimes we'll have, and I, I also was guilty of this too. Just it could be like a Saturday, and then I know where an idea comes. Like. Now I want to talk about the podcast or whatever. And I'm like, <clears throat> or you, you'll come up with something and, and all the time, <clears throat> a lot of the times it will be, um, it'll be like when we're ready for bed and you're like, yeah, cause it's just, and I'm <laughs> like, no, this is not the time to talk about anything. By I agree, but for me, just, yeah. I'm like, I'm ready to sleep. I'm like, <laughs> I, I'm not, I don't talk about this. I have, you have all day to talk about this. So I think when, when I came, I was like, listen, let's create a list yeah. and, and let's communicate through emails about certain things about the podcast so then when we have a meeting everything is addressed so we don't have these random moments where we both think about stuff we could be outside doing food That's shopping the drawback of living with the person you're working with right because right. <laughs> we're if we weren't living together or anything right if we weren't you know so it would come up it would be like that right so it's like learning it's like you know what you have to like put other stuff in the email and organize that mm -hmm. and then set up meetings about, about that and one thing that i was like uh, also separating our 
our personal relationship with the podcast. Correct, correct. Because you have to make sure that, okay, we're working as a podcast. Now we're right. just, uh, we're co-workers, in other words. Right, right. We're not husband and wife. We're, right? No, absolutely not. We're still that, but we have to but know that at if, that moment, if you yeah. got mad at me because I didn't eat the dinner, that has I nothing to do with podcast. the of schedule of that I have two other people yeah. that, you know, saying, or technical oh. difficult, that has nothing to do with that. You know what I'm saying? Or I'm not looking at you as my wife in that moment. I'm looking at you as the producer oh, and the oh. co-creator. So I'm like, that's what I'm expecting things. There's different hats that we're wearing for that. So we can't blend those two things together at times. Um, and knowing that. So I think that was key too, because like, uh, um, you know, you know, along with the emails and the organization of things, mm -hmm. you know, also talking about things, making sure we understand each other, yeah. uh, of what we want to do with the podcast, which is also, uh, Key. I think another challenge. How about within you? Like something that has <clears throat> nothing to do with outside, just something within you. While well, doing the podcast? Yeah. Did you have anything from the beginning to now that maybe a challenge and then you overcame it? Well, I think I think was telling myself that I could do this. You know, that I could be a host, that I could ask that questions. Was a challenge? Well, yeah, because you know, people on the outside like, man, you're doing great, but they that they don't know that it, it took work that like I had to like okay, I, see I had to like you know learn as I go and, re and and learn about myself as an interviewer because I'm different from yeah, what you, you see on TV. I mean you were you started good but you yeah. totally like yeah, yeah you did that all that's trial and error you know mm -hmm. you know I, I don't I don't like to beat around the bush I like to go straight to the juggler mm -hmm. for sometimes with, with questions and stuff like that so I had to learn how to find my voice as a yeah. host. So that was was a challenge in a sense. I was still having fun. I wouldn't say that it was like every day I was stressed about it. No. But there were certain things that I want to become better with, and I would put bullet points and like I want to. Uh, for instance, uh, I remember one that was like, "Man, I got, there's sometimes there's there's some interviewers that are chatty catties. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, how, yeah. How do I make them chat to <laughs> less, but to the point in a sense, right? Or how or do ones I know? Who hardly speak. Or how? Or ones that hardly speak. How and do you I make do, them speak yeah, more? You, well you know how? Them. How do I get in control of that conversation to more or less speak to more. make the things flow? To make sure I'm getting information from them that mm -hmm. I feel will be great and also great for them. Yeah. So those are challenges in themselves. So every mm -hmm. every interviewer is, is different. You know how things are gonna go. Um, they all went out fine and great. Yeah. But molding that. You know, that's uh, I think the interviewers always mold the conversation in a sense, and ho and also having guests that are like, I would say like, uh, don't have ego and pride in a sense, like don't even have a bad attitude because thankfully, uh, I haven't been around uh, interviewers that had a bad attitude, like you know, like I don't know artists that didn't want to be there but they scheduled this. <laughs> oh, so I'm yeah. glad, I'm glad oh, that yeah, I'm yeah. doing this because I have to. Right, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. glad I haven't met anyone <laughs> like that because yeah. I don't think I was. I would say don't do you it. Say, yeah. I, won't, I said I don't want to do this. It. Yeah. You know, because you don't want to do this or whatever. Or you and said you did say yes, but you walked in the interview uh, already, whatever the day, you know, I have a bad taste of the mouth because of the day that you had. Yeah. I would have said, let's do it for another day. Um, like before we started this, I was feeling a certain way and I was right. like, okay, I spoke to you and I said, you know what, before we start, um, I have to let this go right. because if I don't, it's going to show. Right. And it showed. And right. that's why the mics weren't working. Right. Because it was, it was a reason, and then we had to start all over. Um, <clears throat> I, wow, that's crazy. So that question you asked me, what did I learn about myself about the podcast? I actually have that for you. What Now, what did you learn about yourself doing this podcast? Well, um, well I learned um, how to work <clears throat> with you uh, um, besides just as a us two alone. Um, I learned how to deal with po how to handle um, podcast things. And also social media, because honestly, I've never been a social media person. I would post and stuff with my acting stuff, but now I'm more in, into social media because of the podcast, to be honest. When I was involved in acting at the time, before I took the break on um, coming a mom, um, I was in social media. And then I got off because I was dealing with my own stuff. But podcasting has taught me more about... Um, social media, dealing with people, also learning more about people because I'm a loner and I like to be alone a lot. So it helped me communicate more with people. Um, and I feel like I have a lot to learn more because I haven't hosted yet, but I want to dive more into hosting. Mm -hmm. 
and um, that's something that I want to dive into and learn more. I feel like did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah. 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 So to to wrap up uh, this episode, um, I, I have I was looking up like uh, teamwork quotes, mm -hmm. and um, I came up across this one. I thought this was perfect. It just uh, explains a lot about working with other people, and yeah. it goes like this: um, coming together is a beginning, staying together is progress, and working together is success. Uh, that is a quote by Harry Ford. I guess that's the guy that made uh, the oh, car and stuff like that. But I thought that was so dope. What, what did you think hearing that? Uh, I feel like it shows our journey. Um, not only as podcast into podcasting, but also in a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, and it shows um, that we can overcome a lot of things. Um, I feel like, um, yeah. No, I, I agree. Uh, I and it shows up, the growth with how we've been with the podcast. Right. I thought about the podcast. And I thought about the relationship. Mm -hmm. I thought about a lot of things of uh, when you work with people and making sure that you know, you, pre you have the same divisions on, on the same, you all have the same vision for the, on the board, mm -hmm. uh, where you want to go. And knowing that like when things get you know tough and stuff like that, you can, uh, you can overcome it, ride the wave, and, mm -hmm. fig and figure it out as, as you go. Um, mm -hmm. And I thought that was dope. So... I want to thank everyone. I want to thank you for being thank the producer and co-creator of this show, for all the work you have done. I want to thank everybody that has been listening. I want to thank all the guests. I want to thank myself. I want, I want to thank, thank, <laughs> I want I to want thank, thank you, uh, too, because um, this was an idea you had. Yeah. And um, I was like, you know what? I'll help you out. You know, if you mm -hmm. want me to help you out. So basically, this was your baby, and I joined mm -hmm. in. And I just want to thank you for allowing me to be a part of it and to help this um, grow. That's the way it is now. Um, I want to thank myself for allowing myself to learn and grow and not let the pride and ego get in my way because I could be hard-headed and stubborn. Um, and everyone who's been on too, all the guests, all the people who supported, our parents, mm -hmm. <laughs> our spiritual teacher, Guru, who's helped us in many ways. You are now checking out The Win Podcast where the everyday people are the celebrities. So, so let's, let's get, get to, to know, know them. them.